Yeah, a lot of exciting stuff happening uh, at ESPN. Uh, our challenge at Free Will is, is how to really make this work uh, for folks like ESPN and our other clients. So just a brief history on uh, Free Will first. About three years ago, our founders, uh, John Heller, uh, Doug Knopper, and Diane Yu, saw an opportunity to uh, solve a need which they uh, anticipated, which is that running a media business, specifically an ad-supported media business in this world of evolving video assets, inventory, evolving players. We saw Innovid complain a little bit about um, HTML5, and now we have to run on Flash and Silverlight in this very sort of complicated technological world. Um, so three years ago, we began, began building um, a technology platform and suite of uh, complementary consulting services um, to help companies like ESPN scale their media operation in this new world of convergence, convergence between traditional television advertising concepts and the dynamic nature of, of the internet. Um, so uh, what we focus on uh, really at this point at Free Will is our MRM product. It's a flagship product. It's called Monetization Rights Management. It really focuses on these four things. Um, we feel that this industry, with all of its partnerships and multiple sales forces and lots of distribution channels and many different devices, um, a key component is going to be not just, hey, I need to dynamically serve the appropriate or yield optimal ad, but you really need to understand what are the ad sales rights arrangements between you, your various partners, or even within your organization, within the various business units. Um, so managing of the, uh, the core ad sales rights before you even serve the ad, who even has the rights to sell it is a critical component of the, of the platform. Um, forecasting is something that we also found uh, is going to be incredibly different than it has been previously. Traditional television systems have a hard time understanding and will not be able to deal with the complexities of the dynamic nature of the internet. But as we looked at traditional display ad systems and what it takes to, for a company like ESPN, to really understand how much inventory do I truly have available? What can I commit to an advertiser? An advertiser is looking for reach, frequency, and a guaranteed amount of uh, exposure. So forecasting is a critical component of that. And working in this world of video where you have multiple devices and many different types of creatives uh, is something that your forecasting engine needs to be aware of. So a big component of what we're focused on. I mentioned dynamically serving ads. Um, so I'll skip over to the, the next big piece, which is really analyzing and understanding your business. Exactly as Lisa just mentioned, some of the most interesting stats are coming out of the publishers themselves, in addition to the third party stats that are out there to measure what's going on in our space. So we're very focused on making sure that clients like ESPN know down to the individual video level, how is my business doing? How much money have I earned on this set of videos versus that video? So I might need to pay my various partners, or I have some internal transfer fee I need to deal with between uh, the various business units that, I'm, that we're part of. Um, then there's also the advertiser community and the buying community that we need to be able to support. So we need to be able to support all of the standard quartile IAB metrics, custom metrics, et cetera. So that's a brief history of free will. Uh, now I need to jump into how to actually make this work. So in any big conglomerate implementation project, um, we find that you need to satisfy many, many different internal constituencies to make sure that, hey, I'm plugging in a new technology into an existing infrastructure. How do I do that effectively? And we have a sort of a philosophy around this. Um, my role at Freewell, or one of my roles at least, is making sure that each one of these conglomerate implementations goes well. Uh, so when the rubber hits the proverbial road and something doesn't go well, uh, I'm usually the guy to get the blame for that. One of our other clients in the audience recently, when I walked into his office, said, uh-oh, here comes the principal. Uh, <laughs> you know who you are. Uh, so anyway, that's one of the roles. And I, I think um, defining success for an implementation like this, and again, we're really trying to show you guys that it's not just the high-level innovation speak. We're trying to show you how to actually execute on a partnership like this. Um, so what, what does success mean for an implementation like this? Uh, to me, it means it needs to be realistic in its scope, yet also comprehensive enough to um, enable a client not to have any sort of core disruption to what they may have already been doing. And then like everything in our space, it needs to happen fast, fast, fast. So what we do at Freewheel with every conglomerate implementation is take a three-phased approach um, where what we're effectively doing is picking a set scope for phase one and then really iterating over time on the subsequent phases so you can sort of manage the, um, 
manage how effectively you're rolling out into an existing uh, infrastructure. And each phase really begins with a needs analysis, then it gets into a scope definition process, and one of the biggest things we've learned is never let your scope drive your date. Pick a date, fit your scope to it, and then roll out iteratively from there. And then realize that every decision you make in one of these implementations, especially at the scale that we're dealing with here, can have an impact on people, processes, and other systems or ancillary systems that we're working with. All right, so enough about the philosophy. Um, let's talk about what we actually did with ESPN. So phase one of ESPN took about 90 days. We started planning for the plan February 1st. We launched on May 3rd, so that's 90 days almost to the, to the date. And the critical component of phase one is more than anything else, we wanted to replicate what they were, what they were already doing but still incrementing some of the functionality that the systems that we were bringing to the table brought to bear with the end objective, especially with things coming up like FIFA World Cup, college small football, things. small things like that, make sure that there was a seamless experience uh, as far as the fans are concerned and, of course, uh, ESPN's advertiser community that are supporting their, their business. Um, so what did it include? Uh, we, we began with all of ESPN's US video content, uh, starting with the, uh, the Gamecast environment, all of the clips, long form content, et cetera, on ESPN.com, and then last but not least, the very innovative environment around ESE3 and their live streaming uh, environments. Uh, part, of the, part of this phase also included uh, as any media operations person will know, there are a variety of existing systems we need to touch, front-end proposal systems, back-end billing systems, and invoicing systems, and business intelligence. So all of those things were part of phase one. All right, so phase two started after launch, May 3rd, so we're sort of at the beginning areas of it. And um, really what we're focused on now with ESPN is rolling out this integration uh, internationally in LATAM and potentially even into uh, continental Europe. I know we wanted to talk a little bit more about some of the innovation we're doing on FIFA, so. Yeah, I mean, I think as we look at what we were able to do with live programming just a year ago, it was very limiting. We were manually inserting commercials. You know, we basically, our, our, our plan is to strip out the commercial load and then reinsert it and resell it. Um, and so, through the, the work we're doing with Freewheel, we can not only now create a very scalable business serving many advertisers, it allows us to do some really innovative, th innovative things um, from an advertiser perspective. So for this World Cup, we'll be working with over 35 advertisers within the live E3 environment. We are doing things, it, it really interesting sponsorship uh, integrations, we're doing custom content integration for advertisers, we're selling the audience, if you will. There's some work we'll show you in terms of how you sell the user session and how that might be uh, a pretty dramatic thing for the industry. And also how you now connect the television world to the digital world from an advertiser standpoint. So we get that a lot. Um, it's not about a direct uh, extension of television to digital, but it's how can you do unique and creative things in the digital environment around the same kind of content? And so for college football, for example, we've taken our biggest positions on air, if you will, and we've spent time with Freewheel brainstorming about what can we do that's unique and different in a digital environment. And we'll show you some of that work from an advertiser standpoint, but there's some really groundbreaking things that you can do when you start from, a, from the point of the fan and the technology and how you bring those two together.